Islamic Republic, at the top of the power structure, we have the supreme leader, not the president. He remains subordinate to Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, and within that role, his powers are limited. In fact, according to the constitution, the president also doesn't have a say in matters like law enforcement. That falls in the hands of the judiciary, which is deemed an independent body, also largely controlled by the supreme leader. In addition to that, it's not the president of Iran, who is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, but the highest power, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Now comes another corker. While the president on paper nominates the country's ministers of intelligence, defense, and interior, their appointments need the green light from the supreme leader as well as the parliament. On top of that, it's Iran's revolutionary guards, the country's premier military force, who have been increasingly controlling the economy. That's 25 to 40 percent today, and not the presidency. This powerful body also controls the paramilitary Basij militia, which is vital to maintaining the Islamic Republic's influence on wider society. Now, you may be wondering how much power does the Iranian president really have? Well, he heads the executive branch of the country, and while a change in president doesn't necessarily affect state policies, he does have some room for manoeuvre. An example of that was the initial success of the Iran nuclear deal during the Hassan Rouhani administration. But even in that case, the accord, also known as the JCPOA, needed that final stamp of approval from, you guessed it, the Supreme Leader. Up next, we have the Supreme National Security Council, the SNSC, which determines all foreign and national security policies. Now, that body is presided over by the president of the country. However, all the council's decisions must ultimately be confirmed by Ayatollah Khamenei. Last but not least, it's the foreign minister who recommends candidates for ambassadorial positions. Those have to be approved by the country's president. But there are, of course, as always, exceptions to this. It's the supreme leader who has the final say on posts in Damascus, Beirut and Baghdad. Now, you may be wondering why I only use the pronoun he when speaking about the Iranian president and not she. The reason for that is because since the establishment of the Islamic Republic back in 1979, no woman has ever qualified to run for president.